What's up guys? Welcome to Cineverm. My name is Anthony Renteria. With me, like always, the wonderful Chelsea. What's up guys? Yes, today is a beautiful day in Alabama. It's gorgeous, luscious sun. Crisp 70 degrees with the breeze floating southeast at 2.7 miles per hour. Humidity oh. of 47%. Mm. Approximately seven and a half birds chirping. Two squirrels squabbling nuts. And half a dead bush in front of us. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah. As you can tell, we watched Velvet Buzzsaw. This is the spoiler discussion. So you're either here because you saw the movie or you listened to our review and maybe you're not interested in watching it. Yeah. Either way, thanks for listening. What did you think of the Netflix exclusive Velvet Buzzsaw? This movie made me not want to be a critic. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, not Well, just putting my opinion out there, I feel, I feel terrible. Yeah. That whole aspect of the film, I really loved. And it was so... Sh this whole film, I don't even know how to explain it. And watching a film about a critic, and then you're watching him and be like, oh, you're just a fucking critic. Yeah. And then us having to criticize <laughs> a, critic. a movie like that. And then it's so frustrating because... Well, for me, I don't know what you got out of the film. This is the first time we talked about it. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, we just finished watching it. But... I am very torn, and I I have very strong feelings for this film, mm -hmm. and I I don't really know how to explain it. Um, like how do you how do you feel about this film? I, I feel like I need to listen to your perspective first before I say some bullshit. Um, I the biggest thing that I learned is that my art palette is so limited. Mm. Also that. There's so so many art pieces that we don't see as common people that mm. are really beautiful. Oh, yes. That is one thing in the film that I truly loved. All the artwork that they showed yes. was actually phenomenal. And I just imagine me... There is there is a couple films that I, that I hope to do one day that are directly about art mm -hmm. paintings and stuff. And... Mm -hmm. I always imagined, ooh, I would actually commission some very talented artists to create original works for the film. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know if a lot of these works that were in the film, if they were original or if they were other works that are out there that they mm -hmm. just showcased in the film. Yes. But all the works looks freaking phenomenal. If I saw any of those pieces in real life, I think I would actually have that gaze that they have in the film. Like, wow. There's mm -hmm. so much in this. Oh, yes. You can feel the the depth and just the way the the actual artwork looks in the film. Mm -hmm. I how is this digitally shot? The, the film? film? Yeah, I believe it was digital. Mm -hmm. So you think the colors that were shown that we see on our mm -hmm. screen are accurate accurate to what the artwork was like? Uh I mean as much as uh, any photograph can be. I think seeing something in real life is way different, though. Because it's... your eyes, the lighting yeah. goes straight to your eyes. It's not only that, but in a film, you know, you're color grading it. So they can add all kinds of uh, shades and hues to it in the final processing. They darken it, brighten it in post. There's a lot of editing that they do after the film's already shot mm -hmm. that really adjust colors and stuff you remember that behind the scenes mm -hmm. thing of wonder woman you yes. know so every film it goes through a process to to get to the look that it wants to have okay and even though this film did have a pretty flat color palette I did not enjoy the visuals of the film just the color mm -hmm. the, the way it was color edited it just felt felt very digital but not in a positive way mm -hmm. it felt like a mm -hmm. like a digital TV series almost mm. like all this all the scenes where they're in darkness it didn't feel like the paintings looked amazing and that, mm. that's why it's such a weird contrast that you're making a film about such beautiful artwork and then you don't take like how are you not inspired by what you're showcasing as artwork and then 
how are you not inspired to show that through your digital imagery as well? Mm. And seeing it right after burning, mm-hmm. where every scene in that film, I, I truly believe you could pause and you could hang that up as a digital photograph. Uh-huh. There was so much depth, even when he's just riding in the car, the landscapes. There's things for you to see, and in this film, almost every... Well, for me, every shot design I, I did not enjoy at all. Mm. Oh, what do you think? What did, did you mm. did you feel anything visually from this film? I guess it was it was more about what the film made me feel at the mm. end. Yeah, and even throughout the whole the whole scope of the film, mm. I I just felt a lot of weird vibes. Just from how everything was moving in and out, how things were being shown to you, it was so, like, gross. For some reason, it felt gross to me, yet very, very beautiful at the same time. Hmm. First, I don't know why, but there was always something on the sidelines that looked so beautiful, but what's happening is gross. I guess that's what I mean. Yeah. Like... Um, there's someone always consuming something. There's someone mm. always not really appreciating something, which mm. is, I think, the gross part for me. Mm. And the other thing that I noticed is that the actors, one of the the maintenance guy who died first, he mm. was in Game Night. Oh yeah, I recognized <laughs> him right off the bat for mm. just from his smile, and oh, I know Jake Gyllenhaal already i don't know about the cats i've never seen a kitty like that in my life so the egyptian kitty looking thing yeah yeah they look so weird that that one that was probably the best shot of the film and my point of view was that shot of you're seeing underwater seeing the fish Mm -hmm. and then you see the cat and then the cat has this weird refraction Mm -hmm. like i wanted more of that that looked very interesting and it felt like, look at this, what the cat visually kind of represents. Mm-hmm. Just for me, seeing it was a very weak being because mm-hmm. its skin is so wrinkled and, like, it feels like you could just scratch it and it would bleed. Oh, yes. And then it's looking down and it has these eyes that look so evil. <laughs> and it's so wide open. Yeah, and it's looking at fish who look elegant and it's it just feels like it was wanting to pounce and eat one of those fish mm-hmm. right then right there mm-hmm. and that imagery the way that position of it made made me feel those things and oh, i thought and that was cool one show. of the artists was from blind spotting yeah De- david De- david Diggs. yeah i liked his character i especially love the scene where uh he's in the kitchen and he was just like Just oh, you, basking in the uh, scenario. Um, uh, I thought we had something special. I was never obsessed. Ooh. Yeah, no, he was just... He knows how fickle and stupid they both are. Mm-hmm. Because he was never especially entranced with her either. Mm-hmm. And He was just going with it. Yeah, and to see like his care of her because she kept looking at him. Like... Well, should I say the right thing because now I have to please this guy and he was just like why are you looking at me I don't give a fuck I'm over <laughs> here seasoning my salad like getting my protein shake on I don't know what the yeah. fuck so what do you feel what what how did you feel about their romance the between the girl and the critic the main Jake critic John Hall. yeah uh I enjoyed the idea of it I mean so this this film feels like Not to bring back Bumblebee stuff, but it feels like two films. There's this one film, and there's half of the film in it I I really love the idea of and the themes. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like wanting to really dive into those things. And it does a pretty well job of setting it up. You have this, this critic who's at odds with not only the art world and the industry and the monetary and then the publicity and the entertainment value and he also has his own love life Mm -hmm. and all those things are at odds within him but at the same time he feels like an artist Mm -hmm. and he feels his art is to critique honestly and then 
there's really interesting elements where his his uh, admiration for her leads him to critique something badly and how bad it affects him. Because mm-hmm. I feel like in the beginning of the film, you're kind of, oh, he's just a piece of shit critic. But by the end of the film, you realize even the moments where someone was like, well, you give positive reviews for all her work. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, no, I, he just gets mad and leaves. But he, me as a viewer, I was like, oh, he probably does. Mm. But then when it went to the part to where uh, they're like looking at the L.A. buildings and the new intern is telling her that her his ex-boyfriend mm-hmm. was telling her when he was going to give a positive review. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, he never sold out. He was actually honest and all his shit. Yeah. The only dishonest review he ever did was... When the girl wanted to ruin her bo- ex-boyfriend's career. Yeah, and it really traumatized him. Mm-hmm. All the way to the point to where he's in that sound booth. Mm-hmm. And that sound booth thing, I didn't feel it was necessarily tied with the art work that was killing people. That was something he was actually... He was actually so devastated by. Yeah. That he did that to someone. Yeah. Because he see every moment where he he is talked shit about, he attacks back instantly. Mm-hmm. But when it came down to that guy getting in a car accident, he does do the quick remark, almost like an impulse. But then he looks back as like, what did I do? Mm-hmm. Because he knew deep down he did love it. Yeah. And uh, I just thought his his character as a whole was very interesting and the ideas that they showed in the film were intriguing but then there's the other half of the film which is this weird horror it's not even a horror i i really liked how they they kind of said oh it's a horror film but it's not really a horror film yeah it was so... But it was still scary because things jumped out at you like mm. and grabbed you is kind of taking that mirror, mm. that mirror thing. Yeah. That the person in the mirror is going to just look away while you're mm. still looking at it or something yeah. like that. Or to me, that's really scary. I don't know. I didn't like any of the scary things. For... So this is, this is my problem. <laughs> <laughs> like that horror element for me was very very bad Mm. it just didn't make sense it wasn't supporting the rest of the film like i get the idea of i guess you could make the idea that it the art is evil because people were exploiting it and they're turning it into something it wasn't and the guy was spooky like all the ghosts or spooky spiritual stuff i'm game for all that Mm -hmm. that's cool but it almost felt like the film was not taking it serious Mm. in many parts not the film written wise but the the way it was shot because there'd just be scenes where it's just shot in the most generic way like oh my like there was the the shot where every time someone died it was like turn 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 and it would do like triple cuts oh, yeah. like an 80s movie and i don't know maybe he, the director was going for an 80 movie like a older horror movie vibe but having seen films like hereditary or it follows or even a quiet place where the horror you're using the horror the fear of death and anxiety of trauma or damage or fear you're using that to truly go into the the true theme of this of the film and this film had a very good theme which was art and the artwork was killing people so it's like it's already there you already made the connection but you're killing them in these ways that were so boring to me all the deaths i was just like what? How would you have killed someone in this scenario? With any of the artwork? Mm-hmm. I... I think I would have chosen different um, different pieces of art. Because that guy yeah. had a lot of uh, outdoor... Mm-hmm. Like, one had fire. Yeah. One oh had a lot of water. A lot of, a lot of them was... Well, that main one where the guy w- mm-hmm. looked like he was looking to different p- places. Um, just imagine you, that fire coming to life oh. on that person. Or 
that static in their body cr- starts creating and yes. they just are like and then they go they just go insane because it's slow building and mm. then they have an accident or something more intense Oof. you know the possibilities are endless not only are they endless just thinking of it from what go or also there's one that depicts uh, starvation yes so imagine one that you're slowly starving, starving. yes it, it's mind-boggling to me because you have and out the first piece of work that kills someone right mm-hmm. i had automatically I'm, I'm thinking oof you have to kill them in the way that the painting is is portrayed you know one like the double side mm-hmm. the person has to die in the a way that it his death becomes a mirror of the painting mm-hmm. and each death they didn't do that mm-hmm. and i was just like why like you have it there and then i was like all right that'd be cool if you did something even more interesting but it wasn't even tied to the paintings really yeah and then it the final point of me being just like, fuck you, man. Like, what? It felt like the Final Destination movies. Yeah, which is oh, so cheesy. <laughs> and the, the, even the Final Destination movies added had so much anxiety because you would see a pin drop. That and pin then, rolls to the electrical outlet. Yeah. Oh, there's a spark. Spark, spark, spark. Then oh, shit. Fine. Yeah, and you're thinking, oh, fuck, get out of the house. You know, yeah. this was... Little paint drops rolling up her legs. It looked cool. And then it cuts to paint entering your eyeball. What? That's it? That's And then she screams like the normal horror movie female scream. (sighs) And and that was so fucking... Oh my god. No, alright, sorry. I got off track. So... The last last death. Yes. He does what I was saying previous was he had the the two shadows and then her and the cat cat. and i was like "Ooh, this is amazing yes and then he just has her tattoo i guess bus saw her to death or something but i was so he knew that he could have used the paintings as inspirations for their murders Mm -hmm. and even then he i don't know he did it just she didn't do it it almost feels like the movie is uh purposely made bad for me that's what that's what i feel it feels i feel like ugh. i don't understand this movie yeah and that's why I'm... i i don't get it i i appreciate it but i don't get it to the point where i'm kind of not liking it yeah like that point that we just made oh my god you could have all these different deaths and stuff and just my imagination is running wild mm. and I feel like what they did wasn't that great. I haven't seen China go back in my mind. I don't think there is any other film I've seen in my entire life that I wish I could have written. Like, I would have shit myself if I would have came up with this idea. Really? You have so... You have so much to work with. Mm -hmm. Fuck. (laughs) It's very frustrating. Just, Just the idea of a critic criticizing this high level of art. And then you have the idea that art is coming alive and killing people. Yeah. That just, how does, like, there's so many possibilities that I can imagine any other very, imagine, I, I don't know, you can take this core concept and apply it to who, whatever favorite creator or d- director or um, person. And you can just imagine automatically imagine how inventive they could get. Imagine it, Stephen King writing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Imagine Tim Burton directing this. Oh. Imagine even fucking Edgar Wright handling this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so ripe for you stamping your personality into it. Well, this is their personality. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The knit, it was awful. Okay, critic. Very, very awful. And that's, and I, that's me feeling guilty watching a film about critics and i typically hate critics and wait, i and i y- wait whoa how are you going to be a critic but hate critics because i don't think i'm a critic what are you then i'm a film lover but i just happen to not love criticize it. whatever so yeah <laughs> it's just so fucking god 
And then my boys in it. As everyone knows, my two favorite actors in the world, Joaquin Phoenix, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, I feel, I feel as if, all right, let's do a sports analogy because I know about sports. <laughs> Imagine some basketball game, right? Basketballs, hoops, players, audience. See, I know my shit. And then <laughs> LeBron James on your team, right? Mm-hmm. LeBron James is uh, Jake Joan, huh? Mm-hmm. And then you have the coach. This coach just two years prior, this coach won the championship shit. Mm-hmm. Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. That movie was a 10 out of 10. Oh my god, I fucking love that movie. Mm-hmm. That movie is a masterpiece mm-hmm. in every sense of the word. Fucking fantastic. That This director made that movie. Mm-hmm. And I, there, I don't understand how he could, he can go from that to this. But what is? Oh, oh, the metaphor, the metaphor. Me, the metaphor. All right, that's the team, right? You have this coach. He won a championship two years ago. You have LeBron James. LeBron James. You could put him on any fucking team, and it's LeBron James. You can't, you can't fuck LeBron James up. You know, mm-hmm. he's whatever. I've never even seen LeBron James play a game, but people say he's good. Taking their word. I thought you knew about sports. All right, no? and then and then so the move so the game's on, right? Yeah. And you're like, okay, LeBron James doing his thing. The coach is all right. There's, you know, it's first round or first half quarter mark off, whatever they say to time their games. And then halfway through, the coach just takes all his players off. And he puts just, I don't know what the fuck he puts out there. He, he removes LeBron James. That's the metaphor. <laughs> you have a brilliant coach, a brilliant player. And then for some reason, the coach doesn't even let the player have fun. He doesn't even let him play. He, he, he benches LeBron James. Hmm. That was a shitty metaphor. The point is, there is so much potential. Let me, tell, let me, let me say something real quick. Hmm. There must be something very specific about this movie. And what it's trying to say that we don't understand because we're not in that atmosphere on a daily basis. The art world? Yes. Uh, or even creating stuff that is constantly being criticized. Mm. Because the actor from Blind Spotting, he's very artistic. So he must have felt it. Something in this film that made him say yes. Nightcrawler. No, in the script, I mean. I saw an interview with Jake Joan Hall and the other actress, and then they were like, uh, so what made you excited for this film? He was like, well, we worked on Nightcrawler. I told him whatever his next film was, we were going to do it. And then the, <laughs> the interviewer was like, so did y'all read the script? Like, nope, we, you know, he's a great, d-. I mean, I don't say that as, as if they, they chose to be in a bad film, but I, I'm just, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. The point is, I, I do agree with what you're saying. They did see something interesting about no, it. No, I meant specifically the guy from Blind Spotting. Okay. Yes. Because it seems that, like he puts his himself as at a higher level yeah. than most people. Well, that's the other thing. I think if I were to read the screenplay, I would I would actually love the film. So it's the execution that you like? Yes. Like? It is all on the director. Hmm. David Diggs, his character was interesting. Mm-hmm. And he did what he had to do. It was all good. Jake Gyllenhaal did what he had to uh, every, every actor did a performance that I think could have been good. Mm-hmm. It's just the way everything was composed. So much of it was so ugly to me. Like, actually ugly. <laughs> yes, it was ugly to me too. Visually. And uh, the editing was so awful. Just... <laughs> All the horror stuff wasn't scary. It wasn't scary. It was very bad. Um, the music I didn't enjoy. The sound design I didn't enjoy. I don't know. It's just it, I don't know. I, I feel like reading it though. I could you you know when you read something, you're kind of imagining how it would play out. Mm-hmm. I I can imagine the events happening, even the same deaths or whatever. I can imagine them being way more interesting in a different uh, way of execution. Me too, like, I I imagine it in even comic book format. Yeah, because it's all about execution. Written word 
can be changed so easily on set. For example, let's let's take one of the scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. The worst one for me was uh, the girl dying by pain. Oh. Or, what, no, you no, you picked for one. me was the guy dying by hanging. That was so that that's, hand. That's the one that I didn't like. <sighs> All right, so imagine that. Wait, who was the man killing everyone? The dead it painter. No, it wasn't him. It kind of looked like his dad. Oh, maybe it was the the abusiveness of the dad that bled through his work or something. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, all right. So take that scene, right? Mm -hmm. Page one. Dark room, whatever shit. Yes. Oh, I I can't fucking write off the top of my head. But anyways, you s imagine reading that scene out, mm -hmm. and then you have him reaching up to the light bulb. For for some fucking reason, that doesn't even make sense why he's reaching light. All right, he's man, reach. <laughs> He's trying to fix it so it's not blinking. It's it's pr it's a very reasonable thing. A reasonable thing would be let me leave this room that just appeared. <laughs> but he couldn't. He already tried. I would. He didn't try kicking the door in. Oh yeah. I wouldn't be in a. I wouldn't turn around. Oh shit! I'm in a room. Light bulb is blinking. I need to get the fuck out of this room. Mm -hmm. I would be kicking that fucking door even if the lights went off. Mm. I don't know what I would do in that situation. All right, back to my... I would be so scared, I would probably just throw everything. Yeah. And he plays with the idea that the world is evolving into a painting. And he doesn't even do anything interesting with that. Like, that was... That whole... <laughs> what it evolved, the room evolved, evolved into. Mm -hmm. I thought, what what is this, Annabelle? Is this a scene from Annabelle or something? Like... Wait. It felt so contradicting to everything. It, so, what was the point of that sculpture, though? Of that actual... Ball? Room that he was trapped in. So, what was the point of that sculpture? To show a, hoard, he, a hoarding person? I think it Someone was the artist. The hoarding part? How the artist's room was. Wasn't it, like, a tribute to the artist? To the one that died? Yeah. I don't think that was his piece. Oh, it was see, someone it, else. Yeah, yeah, it was. That's yeah, what was, I'm was. saying. What was the point of the sculpture in the first place? To show something chaotic? To show, like, despair? To mm. show, like, a flashback? Or what? What was the point of it? That's what I'm saying. I don't maybe, think there is. Well, maybe we're missing something. Maybe it's that mixed with what happened to him. Mm. That... Um, caused his death because the room was so messy and uh -huh. everything was piled up and at the and it was all piled in the center so it maybe it's um him going up to the top of the pile it's like the end of it and finally all the shit that you piled under you gives out because it's hollow it doesn't mean anything so he died uh -huh. um, <laughs> you can literally that's the thing with Arla you can literally Force something. Force something on it. And I don't know. I cannot say if I like that or not. Mm. But there's there's so many things that are probably super underlined. And they have like double meetings and shit. And mm. it's probably why we're not getting it. Because we're not mm. super into it. I'm going to sound ignorant as fuck. But I think I understand the medium of film enough. To realize that there was nothing of value in any of the death scenes. Ooh, besides the robot one with Jake Gyllenhaal, that one was cool. Just because the robot looked cool. Uh, it seemed like it was someone actually in a prosthetic doing that. That was... Th I thought he was actually going going to... I knew he was going to be a part of the killings from the very beginning. Yeah, it was very obvious. But it looked cool. But then even then, the way it killed... I don't understand. It's a rated R movie. And it cuts away before they're even dead, so it doesn't even feel... It feels like a PG-13 cut. Mm. God, at every element, I, it's pissing me off. I don't think I've been this devastated by a film since we watched Game Over, man. And it, it's equal. They're so similar. Mm -hmm. Workaholics, those guys, the the team behind that show made me laugh so much. Mm -hmm. Gave me so much happiness and entertainment. 
-hmm. and they were so smartly crafted. And then their first Netflix film, Game Over, man. You remember we watched it? Yes. That is, bar none, one of the worst films I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And this film feels so similar to that. But it's worse because that movie was just a joke on, you know, the action movie. But this one actually has elements that I'm like, God, dude, you could have fucking done anything. Mm -hmm. You could have literally done anything. And you had all these key players on your side. Two, a lot of good actors. Two brilliant actors. Three brilliant actresses. <sighs> and a concept that I would, I would kill someone over this concept. If someone said, yo, I have this idea of the, this art critic and then whatever, he tells me the basic plot, I would have to kill him in real life. <laughs> Just to take it? <laughs> so yeah, I, I found this idea in the dumpster. Yeah. That, that was a really interesting... That doesn't make sense. Is that legally... Can you legally find something in the dumpster and then claim ownership? Because copyright exists with... As soon as a creation is created... In the U.S., the copyright belongs to the creator, whether or not but he applies dead. for it. He's dead. So, but it would have went to any family member he had. He doesn't have any family members. I guarantee there's at least one blood relative, distant, 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 distant that it would belong to. I don't know about trash. So, I've heard of some people who were going to um, dumpsters and GameStop, and they were... Because a GameStop would throw certain old old games away. Mm -hmm. And they would pick them up from the dumpster and resell them. And the crime wasn't the fact that they got it from uh, a dumpster. But because the dumpster was still under the property of GameStop. If that makes any mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So if it would have been any dumpster outside of their property... It would have been free game. Mm. So I guess it's I guess it's like was it even in his property at that time? Oh yeah. And what? it was thrown away. So trash is trash. I guess. Yeah. So we had some technical difficulty difficulties. Yes, our recorder stopped recording. recording so mm. we had to back step to see what we said. But um lastly or the last thing we said, we were talking about, um, what were we talking about? Uh, finding art in dumpsters, I think. No, about, uh, film junks. Oh, talk. okay. Yeah. Film junk. All right. So, uh, before the recorder stopped, or after the recorder stopped recording, and while we didn't realize it, uh, I started a, a top, a discussion on, uh, whether or not Netflix basically giving a lot of creators free reign or like a blank check on what they want to create creatively mm -hmm. is making the art better or worse, mm -hmm. I guess. And then you asked me, what do I think on that subject? Yeah, because uh, so like already this year, there's already been three Netflix movies that came out and they all have pretty negative reviews. Mm -hmm. Like very negative reviews mm -hmm. and uh most of these films that come out from netflix are by creators who are very talented mm -hmm. and creative people with a cast and a team that mm -hmm. have created masterpieces mm -hmm. and i mean people refer to it like the netflix junk of the week mm -hmm. do you think that netflix not enforcing or not even checking the quality of their content is making worse content or i mean them just giving the artists Free reign. Free reign is that? I think it's the the angle of free reign that is probably more limiting than you would really expect. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you were also saying that Guillermo del Toro had a set idea for what it was. And the whatever the studio told him, mm -hmm. no, it cannot be black and white. And because he had that extra restraint, he went on to develop something so beautiful. His color grading, you were saying, was so beautiful because he used a lot of blues and greens. Mm -hmm. And it made him innovate. And I think oh, that's, that's the part one. That's the part that I think helps creators is working under tight rules and 
not necessarily tight budget, but um, restraints. Very having to focus is in the end what's making these filmmakers innovate yeah. because they're not giving um, too many ideas. If that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, yeah. There is a, you know, it's um uh like Christopher Nolan. He has a quote that I I don't remember, but the gist of it was. Mm-hmm. The more rules I have for whatever work that I'm making, the more I the the more true it ends up becoming. And there is a there is a lot of artists who I feel like the more they suffer or not suffer physically or emotionally, but suffer rule wise, mm-hmm. and they have to funnel their creation to a very specific point. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know I want to make a film and I have this car chase, and the studios, well, we can't have the car chase, and then you start. Well, how can I show this? Yeah, like, well, what was the car chase about? And then yeah. if you realize, well, it wasn't really about anything. And so then it, you, to, it makes you second guess what the true meaning of what your work is about. Yeah, you really, yeah. It just funnels everything down mm-hmm. to the purest essence. It's almost like, you know, during the gold rush, they would have those weird uh, strainer things and you would have to sift out rocks mm-hmm. from gold and like the water and dust and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's just what I imagine. And I feel as if I think Netflix has obviously giving a blank check is good. I don't think the money thing, even though there are some directors or filmmakers who say having a blank check would only destroy me. Guillermo del Toro is one. Many other fantastic directors. They actually love not having a big budget. You know, like Wes Anderson, he loves having to be like, well, how the fuck do we do this train scene? If you've seen the Grand Budapest Hotel, all the train scenes are cardboard boxes. Like, just think think about that for a second. It's a fucking cardboard box. And you watch it and you don't realize it. it well, that's where the innovation comes in. And it also helps you put... It's kind of like putting yourself in a box and then thinking outside of the box. Mm. You never have that moment of outside the box thought if you never are in a box. Yeah. And I feel this film... Just just to me, it feels like a rough draft. All the everything is there. It feels like a short story that I write and I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. And deep down I kinda wanna let you read it. I wanna let everyone read it. I wanna show it to the world. Mm-hmm. But I know it is a fucking mess. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and it's not it's not pure to what it is. It was just pure to me wanting enjoyment from it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you know, everything in excess is dangerous. You know, if you had unlimited money and you didn't really learn to with restrain yourself, you know, that's how addiction can happen. You know, gambling or drug addiction or even, you know, I can have a soda a day. Fuck it, I'll drink a Coke a day. You know, or fuck, I can get chips. I can eat chips all day, every day. Also, the overindulgence of something also lowers that endorphin that is released in your brain that tells you that I'm enjoying this at this level. So you yeah. eventually need something way worse or a lot more of what you already have. Yeah. So it kind of it's it's like it's like saying, "Whoa, I can literally make the the movie that I've been wanting, right?" And then someone tells you, "On top of that, you have unlimited money." Yeah. And unlimited creativity. And you have the last say. Yeah. So everything that passes through your brain. If you had one car chase in the beginning, you're like, fuck it. Why not have two? Yeah, you know. (laughs) Why not? Why not me just get this badass uh, composer that I've always wanted to work with? Even though right now he's he wouldn't really fit the part. Yeah. You know, you just go to, you go to ham. Yeah. And that, that is very interesting. There was like 20 movies that came out last year on Netflix that I'm on paper. I'm dying to watch, but then I see just the responses and I see trailers and stuff of it, or I see content or scenes and it feels like that. Like, Oh man, this just looks so awful. I don't, it's some, some creators. I don't want to see their unfiltered work, Mm. but then at the same time you have like Roma Mm-hmm. But that's one out of a hundred. <laughs> what do you mean unfiltered work? Well, unfiltered, like it was never checked or it was never, you know, it's imagine having a novelist write his book and then it, he never employed an editor. Mm. 
I think there is. But I think the reason why it works with Alfonso Cuaron was because he has a full lifetime of, of, experience. Ex- of experience with limitations. Yeah. And he knows how to limit himself in the right ways to where he doesn't need anyone else to tell him. Yeah. You're doing t- this too much. And he. it seems like he's always thinking about is this right is this moving is this what i really want like on a constant mm. shot to shot basis yeah. and that doesn't seem to be happening in this specific movie that we watched yeah it is kind of, is like you're saying it was an overindulgence of i have everything yeah or what do you think no yeah i agree there there is because he that movie did feel very he had a lot of roles like he didn't do zooms or pans or whatever so he set rules up where this film, I don't feel a single rule in place or I don't feel any limitations in place. And mm-hmm. I don't even feel, I mean, I said previously uh, before it cut off that this film just felt light. Oh yeah. Really the, light. Paper thin. And there is, like, do you think limitations for, so I think limitations as, so you have, you have a plain, you have a plane, right? Mm-hmm. And then your limitations are you need to build a house. And when someone tells you, you have a whole acre to build a house, you could probably spread that house out mm. for the whole acre and it'll be one story. But the limitations force you into a smaller chunk of real estate to where you would either have to build very high Mm. to fit everything you want or dig down deeper Mm. and that's where i think the depth comes in yeah i feel i feel that way because this film tackles a lot of ideas too you know it tackles the whole go ahead sorry not just the depth but how you were saying it's very light Mm -hmm. it's very one one dimension one story not very heavy which is seeing a multi-story building is very heavy on the eye because yeah. you think, how in the world is that supported? You yeah. know, and then you get way more points of critical thought than for a one-story house that is very basic. Yeah, I'm sorry, I I had my thought and then I just oh no, you're it was good. kicked out of the door. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Uh, the point is, <laughs> uh. Hopefully, I don't know, I'm kind of already, like, done talking about this film. I feel like yeah. I've kind of wasted time talking about this film. And, oh, man, I'm just so disappointed. But, I mean, I don't even know what other aspects to talk about. And since the recorder turned off, I was kind of crunchy about that. <laughs> and I don't even, ugh. I, I don't know if it cut off our discussion that uh this just feels like a film I would really love to have came up with or oh. to write. It's just so full of ideas and it kind of reminds me of Bird Box, but even Bird Box was this much greater film than this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like now no one can really make this movie, at least yeah. for a couple of years until people forget about it. Because people are, there's always this like, well, they already did the art art piece murdering movie. You can't mm-hmm. do that now, but... I'll find a way. Do you have anything else you want to add about the film? We recently learned about a film that was remastered multiple times. That movie, you're listening to a YouTube video about the actress talking about how in her role as the wife, um, or she, specifically what I'm trying to say is that she said the movie was made three times. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it reminded me of what you're saying that it has to be remastered later on when people do forget. So Oh, you're talking have... A Star is Born. Oh, the, yeah, yeah The Star yeah. is Born. A Star is Born. I fucked up. Yeah. But how is... Like rebooted. Yeah, it's like a reboot, but now I know why it makes sense. It's because everyone forgot about the old one completely. Mm. So you don't have any real connection aside mm. from the title. Yeah. And you can create... And you can start from a clean slate, you know? Yeah. I just want to say, uh, if you haven't seen Nightcrawler, fuck, you need to watch that movie. Mm. 10 out of 10. This guy directed that, and seeing him make something so awful is just breaks my heart. Mm. Um, I don't know what else to say, to be honest. I don't think I have anything else What's to say. What's your score? Uh, let me... You can give your score. I give it a 3 out of 10. Who, who would you recommend this film to? Would you recommend it to anyone? 
Yes. Because I I know that there's someone out there who knows exactly what this person is talking about. So if you like the concept of a white painting with white paint, you will love this movie. You know how there was an era to where people just painted with white paint on a white canvas and they called it something? I did not know that. Yes. Hmm. I think they will enjoy it. Like, we, we saw one. It was here in Birmingham. One was called, uh, like, uh, A Dog in the Snow. Mm-hmm. And I guess the puppy or the dog's fur was white. And then yeah. you just saw, like, some barely swirly whatever. Yeah. But the point... I think the point of those paintings were during that era, things uh, that were accepted were very poppy and they were kind of rebelling against it. Yeah. And they made these white paintings for a very specific reason, to rebel against mass media art. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If you like the concept of why white art in general was made, for example, those white paintings. Some people I know look at white on white paintings and they get so mad. They're mm. like, why? And yeah. they just throw art, all art out the window because they're like, if this if this stuff exists, it's not for me, you know? Mm. And um, yeah, so I'm saying if someone likes that concept and they appreciate the history behind the art i think they will like this movie or even see something more than i i was able to see because i guess my palette isn't that good or i didn't think deep enough or i didn't feel anything but it was just not the movie for me so what was your rating again sorry a three out of ten three out of ten yeah i think this might be the first time I give a worse review than you on Tinder Room. What'd you give? I think I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. Why? The word is... Let me bring out my inner critic. Terrible. Terrible? I thought this film was terrible. What's your 3 out of 10 then? My 3 out of 10 is awful. How is awful less I don't know. than terrible? I mean... You think it is worse? F- I don't fuck. This is the problem with being a critic that... Someone challenges you, and then you're like, uh. <laughs> Point is, I give this film a 2 out of 10. I thought it was terrible. Mm-hmm. On just a pure execution standpoint, it's very interesting, because last night we watched Burning, and that movie I just felt this lack of connection to, but it was so masterfully made. This film had all the ingredients for something truly amazing and truly original, and it just shits all over itself. It's it's like there's a there's this dog that lives in our house and her name is Linda and sometimes wow. she pees and then she'll sit in her own pee. This film reminded me of that. Just on what? Uh, visually, one of the worst looking films I've seen of the year of God. It was it was not. Oh my God. The editing in, in was, Linda's defense, she still doesn't even know. Yeah, she's a pee pee. But uh, editing was awful. It was edited like a some b horror movie which i get if it was aiming for that but half of the movie doesn't feel that vibe it's like that that literally that movie that everyone was saying oh it's a perfect b movie which one upgrade no no not at all the one where it's an insane asylum oh insane insane yeah it's kind of like this that movie it had brilliant ideas and then it just shits itself and you know what's so interesting about that? That's literally... Uh, let me show you something. Are these guys friends? Look, my 2 out of 10, the definition of a 2 out of 10 I have is unsane. So this one's also <laughs> kind of on unsane level. Yeah. For you. See, this is my description for a 2 out of 10. This is the kind of film that was ruined in execution, talent, or creativity. It had possible two or three things that could have made it a decent film, but even those things were subpar. This isn't a film worth recommendation, even to a fan of the genre or the creators. So you wouldn't recommend it to anyone? I honestly, I don't. I would not recommend this film to anyone. And I, I am Wait, a die hard. I feel like you tricked me. 
Why? Because you asked me what I would <laughs> who I would recommend it to. Oh. And I get on to you on the other episodes like you cannot just recommend average Mo any mm-hmm. film. Yeah. Well, I don't recommend this film to anyone. Damn it. I, I truly think it was a waste of time. I'll take it back. Even me being a super hardcore, die hard Jake Gyllenhaal for life fan boy. Whoa. Uh, I, his performance was awesome. By the way, I love I love how he he played this. Like he reminded me of uh uh what's his name Tom Ford. I watched a couple interviews and uh, YouTube episodes of Tom Ford dressing people, and he literally is Tom Ford. He must have watched Tom Ford. Well, he did a movie with Tom Ford, Nocturnal Animals. Really? Yeah, but the way he held his hand out, this his whole essence of like kind of elegant. But at the same time, he's all, like, snappy and stuff. Like, he has this... I don't know. It wasn't... Uh, it's not flamboyant, but just he's... He has this... You know exactly who he, who he is just by how he stands oh, okay. as a person. Yes. And Jake Gyllenhaal fully embodied that. And he, like, leaned back. And just his whole body composition was changed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just love seeing actors take on a whole new role. And I think he did, he did a great job. And all the other actors and actresses did. Mm-hmm. Did good jobs as well, but yeah, this movie's terrible. Don't let your kids watch it. Write a le- letter to your congressman. What? <laughs> Why is it always political? I don't know. Man? But uh, yeah, that's our spoiler discussion. I just want to personally apologize. Um, I, I, uh, I feel like I did a shitty job with this this uh, discussion because the recorder timed out and I was really hyped, and now I'm unhyped and. I don't even know if we even talked about everything, but I'm just so annoyed with talking about it. Mm. But, well, we can stop it. Oh, no, no, I'm good. Oh, okay. It's just like, you remember when we reviewed I, Tanya? Mm. I, I'm feeling that. Like, I just don't want to fucking... Like, I'm actually, I'm not actually annoyed. I'm just annoyed at the movie. Mm. And I don't know how to piece it apart. And stop the annoyance. Yeah. I get it. It was just all the... I've already I'm just repeating myself so yeah. thanks for listening uh you know go watch a different movie maybe blind spotting that has Davy Diggs or Nightcrawler or Hereditary with Tony Collette and uh what is Hereditary again? the horror movie we watch with the families and stuff oh yeah we should do a review of that that would be amazing yes I would love to rewatch that film yes but thanks for listening uh email us if you for some reason like this film and uh maybe you can give us your opinions on it and we can share them with the world i think if there is like a fan base for them maybe there is people who really love this film um so email us at cineverm at yahoo.com uh leave us comments suggestions uh and yeah thanks for listening hope you have a great week yes you know if you're a critic stay a critic <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be a critic anymore. Ah. This movie ruined the criticness for me. Just because it showed critics or what? I don't know. It's like... It's... It's like I'm judging myself mm. for judging other other stuff. Well, I'm not... I don't know. I don't even go into... Like, I'm even this film, I hated it, but I'm not judging... I'm not judging really the film. I'm judging my experience of it. Hmm... I don't know. I don't take it as that. I Even when I see this, maybe it's just because I know why I'm doing it. That I know I'm not doing it in a, in a way to harm anyone. I'm doing it because I want to learn. And I don't want to do things I don't like. Well, I guess for me, it's more of the fact that I don't like hearing myself talk. Hmm. Because I prefer to be a person who talks very little. Hmm. But it means a lot then. You have your opinion about everything, and you talk about it often, mm-hmm. yeah. and then that's it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I do understand. There was the points of this guy where he's even criticizing caskets, and he's criticizing this, and he's criticizing that. And I think yeah, that's a true critic, but we... Where's the limit? Well, that's what I'm saying. We, we're not doing... I've never criticized... I'm not even criticizing this car. Look, Look at this. Now you are. <laughs> oh shit. But I don't criticize things just f- 
because I think they're flawed and I want everything to be perfect. I'm criticizing mm-hmm. because I want to learn the mm-hmm. asp. I think of it in a more scientific way. You know, if you're a scientist and you how they find germs. Mm-hmm. They had to boil everything down and break down elements and figure something out and piece it apart so they could piece it back together. For me, it's, it's more, more about it's more about breaking things apart um, methodically, right? Yeah, yeah. Than you just choosing something. Exactly. I I hope that right? comes. Yes. It's like you're criticizing between two vases. It's your way is how are these two vases made instead of saying this one sucks i don't want it i want Mm. this one here's here's a very important distinction critics do not well most critics do not create true original work Mm. me on the other hand well this this is all right take for example a food critic most food critics don't cook their own food Mm -hmm. they don't even know how to cook but they talk about food and they disparage it or whatever but then you hear Gordon Ramsay talking shit about food. And he's not talking shit about really the person who made it, but the flaws within the creation of it. And okay. he's breaking it down to not only show you, hey, this is why it's fucked up. Your sour cream is fucking three years expired. Your yeah. meat is dry. <laughs> your your pasta is hard. Fix these things. These are elements that you can easily fix. And that's where I hope I... Am approaching it because I want to make films. Yes. I would never criticize something I don't want to make. That's that's why high art or paintings and murals and uh, sculptures to me are so beautiful and they're like angelic. They're with they're not within reach mm-hmm. to my understanding, and I I can never look at a, one painting and look at another painting and compare them because I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And I wish to understand it, but I could never critique it mm-hmm. in the way that I'm critiquing films because I do understand how to break down films mm-hmm. still in a very elementary way because I'm just learning. But mm-hmm. when I break it down, I'm breaking it down for my own knowledge. I just We just happen to be sharing it. Yeah. And I think if more people critique things because they want to create it, then there would be it would eliminate all the evilness that is within people who critique work and they don't even create work what do you what are you critiquing it for you know like why is a critic a critic because they love movies but why if they're not teaching people how to make better movies or teaching people how this movie to them was bad but to you it could be good and him breaking that down can reveal something to you or to someone else Mm. that that's a very that's a distinction and that's what i want I want more critics like that. And I think if there, if more filmmakers, especially, critiqued other filmmakers' work, mm-hmm. then that would happen. Mm-hmm. And I think those critiques are so honest. Like, when I hear... Uh, cri- I watch a lot of, like, roundtables with directors. Mm-hmm. And when directors are talking about other directors' work, like, how did you do this scene? And it made me feel this, this. Like, that is gold to me. Because mm-hmm. that is a true critique of someone else's work. It's always positive because no one wants to be an asshole. Mm-hmm. But I I love that. And I wish there was more of it. I wish there was just more people talking about filmmaking who actually know filmmaking. Because half these critics, I read their shit and they just make these smart-ass lines that make them sound snobby. Even in this film, it kind of showed it where he's talking about how it was some experience or whatever. And he just, it's baseless. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not saying like I'm super smart and shit because I basically just said this film was terrible but and that's why I feel kind of bad because I don't think I really def- uh, had a structured argument mm. because I got kind of annoyed halfway and then the recording turned off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was two bad things at this time. But anyways, I think we're done. Yep. If you're listening to this, we didn't cut it out, so congratulations. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. You, oh yeah, you, yeah.